Um, so I'm interviewing uh, Myron Semkuli, who is uh, one of the first candidates to sit the certification examination in family medicine in 1969. Um, and uh, we're going to spend a bit of time talking about his experience with his exam and his career in family medicine. Um, so, Myron, I, I think I'd like to start by talking about what interested you in getting into family medicine? I know you graduated in 1964, and and uh, it was a time when specialty medicine was on the rise, and general practice was not uh, the uh, the sort of classy discipline it is today. Um, and I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about what motivated you to become a family physician rather than another specialty. I. Uh... Well, ever since I was a young boy, I wanted to be a doctor, and I never thought I'd, that that would happen. But as I went through school, things slowly worked out, and and I was always interested in people and and their problems, not just uh, their medical problems, but uh, any other kind of problems too. And uh, um, of course, as I did get into university and into medicine, and uh, it was medical problem, but still, the, the, it was the person, as the people that sort of interested me and I always thought if I never did get into medicine I would probably try psychology and get, try to get a PhD in psychology because that's really what I was interested in working with the people talking to them and and having them talk to me and so on uh, but I was fortunate to get into medicine and uh, it carried on that way and and I always felt that the only discipline uh, that really dealt with people and all their problems was really family medicine, being a, a, a general sort of physician. And my own uh, physician, thank goodness I didn't have to see him very often, but whenever I did, uh, he treated me in a way that I felt I would like to work with people when I grew up. And um, fortunately, it worked out that way. I I felt that other disciplines just didn't have that same all-encompassing sort of um, uh, desire to deal with um, the to the total person, and um, so I uh, really wanted to do family medicine. There really wasn't much of a, a major decision for me to have to make. Okay. Um, when I spoke to some of the other uh, people who were candidates that, that year in 1969, I asked them a little bit about how well prepared they felt for uh, for when they entered practice. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, they all did their MD and then they went on and mm -hmm. did a, a, a rotating internship and, and uh, they took different kinds of approaches to it, but they all felt um, not felt that they had not been prepared adequately. And I just wondered, can you talk a bit about how you felt uh, and what you might have done to, uh, if, you, if, you, if you needed additional training or experience? Yes, I, uh, after graduation, I came to Calgary and did one year of rotating internship. And uh, of course, we never learned during that year what we're supposed to do once we get out into the community. Um, and I did uh, get a job working in a small clinic in a small village on Vancouver Island after that one year of internship and uh, got out there and I was totally unprepared uh, for that experience. So thank goodness there were two elderly uh, uh, general practitioners there that helped me along and uh, really taught me a lot. I think I learned a lot more in that first year of working from these two elderly physicians than I did in my rotating uh, internship year, at least as far as working in the community. So I, I knew that uh, after two years or after a year and a half working in that small town on Vancouver Island, I needed a lot more training. Um, you know, when you're called up uh, in a heavy snowfall on Christmas Eve to see somebody uh, 20 miles away and um, the person has fallen and either fractured their arm or dislocated their shoulder. Uh, you're the only one around. You've never seen that before. It's rather uh, um, 
sort of challenging, shall we say, uh, or when you're, another experience I had, uh, I was the only one around and uh, I was called to see an acute abdomen and, and a young boy and so I diagnosed it, uh, appendicitis. I was the only one there. We had a physician uh, that would be the anesthetist, but I had to do the surgery. And that was the first time I had to do that all by myself. So it was rather challenging. Um, and I felt that if I'm going to continue, I must get more training. So um, I uh, went on and I thought maybe taking your ear of surgery would help. So I, I um, did that. But that was before the family practice uh, program had started. As I was finishing my one year uh, in uh, residency in surgery, I then did learn that a, a family medicine residency program was started in Calgary. So then I came back to Calgary and they allowed me to join the third year of the family medicine program at that time. So um, they, uh, allowed me to take the one year mainly uh, in, in medicine and uh, obstetrics, pediatrics, and then I was um, allowed to write the examination. So I did have three years, uh, plus two years out um, in the boonies learning what I needed to know. And <laughs> uh, by that time, I certainly felt the one year of, um, of the family medicine program here in Calgary, which was the third year of their program at that time, was really very, very good the way they had it set up. And uh, I went into that uh, hoping that I would learn exactly what I needed to do to work in uh, family practice out in the community. And indeed it uh, it did. I felt much more confident. My uh, confidence was totally different after that year compared to the time after the one year of rotating internship. So it was a good experience. I'm glad I did it. And it allowed me to really uh, feel that I was able to do family medicine well. Oh, that's that's really interesting. Um, yeah. The so you were you graduated from that in nineteen, I guess in sixty nine. Then yes, is that right? And <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and th was it just sort of assumed you would sit the exam, or did you choose to uh, to do that? Um, I, I asked a couple of the other people who sat the exam and and suggested, well, I kind of said, why did you take a chance like that? I mean, it wasn't going to get you a license and it wasn't going to get you more money. <laughs> and I was just curious about what, what motivated you to take it. Well, I just felt that the exam was uh, just the last part of the whole training procedure. Okay. And uh, okay. I, didn't, I never thought twice about it. I just thought that's part of the whole thing. Uh, it would tell me if I... Um, was qualified according to others. Whether I passed the exam or not, I would still be able to go out in the community and uh, do family medicine. Uh, yes, it's true, it didn't give me any higher position or anything like that, but that's not what I was looking for. I just wanted to be able to be more comfortable doing my job, and indeed I was. But when I wrote the exam, uh, it was uh, very interesting and challenging, and and uh, fortunately, for some reason or other, uh, they passed me. So uh, <laughs> everything turned out fine, yes, in the long run. Okay. And, uh, it was a good experience. I'm, I certainly would repeat everything again if I needed to, you know. Okay. Did you, did you think that the exam was um, uh, testing you as a family physician as opposed to, I mean, you must have done other exams through medical school. I just was curious about how you saw it. You went <clears throat> okay, Paul. Um, uh, let's be frank about this. That's 45 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 45 years and four months, June of 69, yes. So, um, heck, I can't uh, really quite remember. Um, I, no, I, I just had a good feeling the whole time going to Hamilton to write the exam, uh, going through that experience with the few others that were there, the 11 other people. Um, and um, I just thought that it was all sort of part of the whole picture of completing what I had started uh, to be a family physician, qualified family physician as such. Um, I I think probably I felt that it was, it was an exam that was testing me more on what I wanted to do the rest of my life as compared to just writing the LMCCs a few years prior to that. Yes. Right. 
Good, good. Um, okay. Um, one of the things that um, I, I'd like to shift gears a little bit and maybe just talk about your career. And um, a, lo a number of the people who sat the exam that year ended up um, in academic medicine. I mean, Brian Hennon became a dean, ultimately. Um, most of the others ended up teaching in some capacity. Um, I just was interested in, your, as you looked ahead to what you wanted to do, uh, was academic medicine at all part of what you were interested in? or And just curious about how you made those decisions. Well, yes, academic medicine, um, I was sort of pulled into it because being the first one to uh, write and pass the exam in, in Calgary or in Alberta, um, they then asked me um, to uh, join the faculty. Um, in 69, I wrote the exam. In 1970, I examined those that examined me the year before. And <laughs> through that process, I got sort of slowly through osmosis pulled into academic uh, family medicine uh, training here at the university. Um, I had also, besides dreaming about being a doctor when I was a child, I also wanted to uh, uh, do things in other countries. Uh, that is sort of foreign aid medicine. That was another dream of mine that I thought never would uh, happen. But so when I was a young family doctor, I still had that dream. And I wanted to eventually go into that sometime later in my career. Um, I was a member of the uh, Faculty of Medicine, uh, Department of Family Medicine at the University of Calgary here, but only part time. And um, to become a full time position, I would have to give up my office, full time uh, staff member, I would have to give up my office and work according to their schedules. And I just didn't feel that um, that would fit into my dream of uh, being able to go away and do work abroad, um, volunteer work abroad as freely. So I just um, was doing uh, teaching in my office or occasionally at the university on a part-time schedule, which allowed me to have the freedom to eventually begin uh, our foreign medical aid charitable work, which we started in 1992 eventually. Oh, okay. Um, so between uh, sort of the early 70s and 92, did, what sort of practice did you, were you involved in? Were you in rural medicine or did you work in the urban center or? Um, no, it's in Calgary. They, uh, uh, two other um, uh, physicians and I started uh, our own clinic in uh, a poor part of uh, Calgary. And um, we, uh, well, we built our clinic and then eventually we had seven physicians there. But that's where I worked most of the time. So I was working with a lot of uh, other ethnic groups and um, saw a lot of social problems and so on, which was really what I wanted to be involved in, uh, helping people in, in all these various areas. So it was a good experience for me, and I think it really helped prepared me to be able to deal with various other ethnic groups when we finally did start to go abroad. Uh, so I stayed there and um, did, did get a good experience in teaching uh, medical students and residents that uh, usually came to the office. And that helped me then to be able to do some teaching of young people to become medics on the, uh, up uh, in the refugee areas in Southeast Asia where we go now. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so in the, as you said, in the 90, it was 92, I think you said that you started doing some work overseas. Um, can you talk a little bit about what what you did between '92 and currently? Uh, did you were you in different parts of the world? Well, we started. Um, we weren't sure where we were to go, so we started looking about 1988, 89, different parts of the world, talking to different people, and so on, going to conferences. We finally uh, heard about uh, the Burmese refugees on the Thailand Burma border. Um, and their problems. So we made a visit there in 1992 and found that really that's really where we belong. And we made a commitment to return every year and we have every year ever since then. We haven't missed a single year. Uh, our work, work slowly 
grew and expanded. At first, we were just seeing patients and bringing supplies and so on. But we found that we had to actually uh, provide some education to the young people that wanted it so that they could continue providing medical care to their own people when they're no foreigners. And most of the time there, they're no foreigners. So uh, teaching uh, became a very big part of that. And it has continued to be ever since. We've slowly expanded our work along pretty well the 50% of the uh, Thai Burma border, the northern half of that border. And so we have uh, various uh, uh, clinics and schools and orphanages that uh, we have sort of begun and supported and, and continue to work with. Um, the uh, As that became bigger, I had to make a choice between either stopping that or giving up my practice. And um, in December of 1999, um, I um, I pulled at Trudeau, I guess, and went for a walk in the blizzard and uh, made a decision. And uh, in January, um, uh, I gave a notice that we, I was going to leave my clinic, notice to my partners. And so I left my practice and um, worked um, as um, doing locums and walk-in clinics from that time on. Mm -hmm. uh, that allowed me to have the freedom to go abroad and uh, as much as I wanted to uh, to work on these uh, projects here. We've expanded. Uh, we do some work in Nepal also. And of course, we also go for months to uh, to Ukraine. So we, we're away about four months of the year. My goodness, that's, uh, that's a lot of work. Um, um, so that's interesting. Uh, the college right now is becoming much more um, uh, involved in in what they're calling global medicine, and so uh, there's a, a a committee and a group uh, that's really focused on on encouraging new graduates to take on a role not unlike what you've just described. Um, plus, there's also that interest in dealing with immigrant populations here and refugee populations here as well. So that's been a big uh, that's a, a a fairly new initiative within the college. Um, I, one of the things I wanted to ask you about a little bit was um, how you uh, look on the discipline of family medicine. Um, this new involvement in global health here is part of a special interest focused practice initiative within the college. So, you know, it's 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 trying to provide a home for physicians who take on a, a, a special interest or a focus in their practice. It might be sports medicine, but it also might be what you've just described doing. I, I'm i curious about how you look at family medicine, whether you see this as a positive direction or uh, or not. Uh, I'm just, it's, I've had everybody t sort of talk about their definition of generalism and so forth. Do you have any comments in that regard? Well, yes, I guess it sounds like there's sort of two uh, topics there. First, uh, the way family medicine has been going. Um, well, the way I look at it, the way I practiced family medicine and really enjoyed it and would do it again the same way, that seems to be changing. Now, everything in life changes. Nothing stays the same. Everything, that's just the way nature is. But I guess, Frank, I'm just a little bit disappointed maybe in the way family medicine is gone and I think we're getting too many subspecialists within family medicine and not enough people actually treating the whole family from birth until death, which to me is what family medicine is all about. And if you don't really become involved in that very much, then um, are you really a family physician? And I guess that has sort of changed. Uh, working in walk-in clinics now, I see a lot of patients coming in. Um, because it is difficult to get in to see their family physician or the family doctor doesn't do this or doesn't do that. And um, if they'd have come in uh, 25 years ago and said that to me, I would have disappointed. I would have been disappointed. I would have wanted to try to do or help them in every way that uh, they asked rather than have them go to a walk-in clinic looking for somebody else. I think mm -hmm. family physicians have lost a bit of that and um, Patients don't look on their family doctor quite the same way as they used to. Um, I think really 
if we're going to succeed as a college and of family medicine, I think we need to get back a bit more towards that. Um, and or if not, then I think things will evolve and change uh, and we will be um, a different college uh, with a different name doing different things and not really family medicine. To be, to, um, again, when you go abroad to do work, it uh, depends on what you want to do. I know some of my classmates uh, have gone abroad. They would go abroad for a couple of weeks and do a lot of surgical work, fix a lot of uh, teeth or uh, glasses, uh, vision, or do a lot of um, orthopedic work for two or three weeks, and then they would come back home. Um, again, that's I, I guess that's that's necessary and it's helpful to a degree, but I think that actually helping again as a family physician, I look at helping the people there in all their areas. And um, when we go there to teach the young people how to become medics, we do not ignore the fact that there are 50 orphans living there in scattered homes because there's no place to keep them. We looked at that as a problem of the community and then did eventually develop an orphanage for them to try to help them. So the these young children now have grown up because it's 15, 20 years since we've had that orphanage and they've grown up and I think in much better atmosphere than if they'd have been in all the various separate homes which could not provide the attention to care the food etc so I think looking at the whole community is important because that's what allows them to perhaps to pick themselves up but that's only my opinion as, as the way family <laughs> as a family physician what I like to do what I think is necessary to do to help people in the world right um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a physician. I've worked here for nearly 40 years, and and what you've just described is uh, not an uncommon per, uh, point of view for a lot of members of the college, even younger ones now. So it's uh, it's interesting. You're right, how things have changed. Um, I guess uh, we're. I think I think we've probably touched on all the things I wanted to 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 raise with you. You, I just wanted to give you uh, an opportunity if you had any um, comments or new certificates. Um, one of the things I want to do with these is these interviews is make them available to people who um, are uh, finishing their residency training and going to challenge the exam. And here's some interviews with the first candidates ever. Um, do you have any comments for that group as they head into a career? Um, well, yes, I guess the uh, the main comment is really to uh, to think to yourself, why are you going into family medicine? Uh, family medicine is a discipline where indeed you are interested in the patient, the patient and their family, the patient family and perhaps uh, community. That that's that's really family medicine. If that's what you're interested in, then uh, go ahead and do it and maintain that interest and and work at it. I think if if you're not quite interested in that broadness of family medicine, then perhaps that's not the area uh, where where you should be, and maybe look at other things. Um, I think it's better to have fewer family physicians that indeed are true family physicians than have a lot of them out there that only do a few things and they're not really totally encompassing. Um, uh, to me, I think that we have a good, strong college of family medicine that in Indeed, does have members that practice complete family medicine. Uh, that is much stronger. It would be much better for the community and the country. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much. This has been uh, a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really having a good time talking to all the first candidates. They're all really interesting people, and sounds like you had a great career. Thanks again. Yes, I'm sure that you're enjoying it. That's that's great, and I'll be very interested in uh, hearing and looking at uh, the other candidates that were there with me in 1969 in Hamilton in June. Yes. <laughs> okay.